So hopefully you listen to the whole song, but <laughs> listen to the message at the end. Stumbling done was impressive Would you agree? Can't count times falling hard Down on sore knees Finally see through you Like no one ever will As a storm rolls in Outside my window sill, I'm gonna rise for the occasion. I'm gonna stand tall, voice strong, a real presentation. And when you're trying to choke me with your limitations I'm gonna rise for the occasion How do they walk with eyes wide open and not see a thing Touch with hands every detail, but not feel anything. There's a border, I'm sure they've crossed that line before. Drift on by unseen, not a care in the world anymore. No longer gonna accept the dive and be buried alive. I'm gonna rise for the occasion. I'm gonna stand tall, boy, strong, a real presentation. Trying to choke me with your limitations I'm gonna rise for the occasion Stop floating through the wind alone Feather you can fight this storm, gather forces together, ah, resurface what you built inside, and you will eventually begin to rise for any occasion. I want you. All to rise for the occasion. With innovation, social consciousness, social awareness, connection, and humanity. However, in a city organizing conferences to celebrate our future, it seems a stark comparison to be holding protests to condemn it. Today as I stand before you, I'm speaking about a future I am less assured of, the future of medical care in Canada. 
As a medical student and as a Canadian, this is my future. Therefore, I find it important to reflect upon recent changes. On June 30th, 2012, the federal government implemented cuts to the Interim Federal Health Program, or the health care coverage available to refugees in Canada. They did this for several reasons of which I've been trying to make sense of in the past months. I believe that every decision that we make leads us towards a certain outcome, and these sort of decisions shape our lives. This leads me to question what kind of world is being shaped for us, the future physicians, to one day inherit. Today becomes tomorrow. In this era of socialized medicine, Canadians tout the principles of justice, of providing health care to all people, regardless of their social situation, and on the principle that health is a basic human right, which is wholeheartedly upheld by our public health care model and our actions on the international stage. In the previous fiscal year, the Canadian International Development Agency offered 3.39 billion aid, nearly 26 million of that was directed specifically towards health, education, and social services. In November 2010, CETA committed 2.85 billion over five years to addressing global issues of maternal and child health. Now, I'd like to contrast that with a few vignettes of documented cases, cases that have happened since these cuts. A woman in her third trimester of pregnancy develops preeclampsia, which is a potentially life-threatening condition. She does not qualify for medical treatment. A woman in active labor is asked to sign a release that she will pay for her own epidural. She delivers without pain medication. A woman who is 32 weeks pregnant presents to the emergency department on two separate occasions reporting terrible pain in her abdomen. She would not be seen until she signed a document saying she would be financially responsible. She left in both cases without being seen by a doctor or a nurse. We have no idea what happened to this woman. It would seem that despite the federal government's commitment to save mothers and children outside of Canada, it cannot promise the same humanity to individuals who seek refuge within our borders. Our children today become our future tomorrow. Of course, while mothers and children are particularly vulnerable to these budget cuts, they are not the only ones affected. Many of the refugee population are denied basic medical care, such as doctor and hospital services. And many more are, are denied prescription, eye, and dental care. This leads to an overuse of expensive emergency care. Instead of receiving routine um, medication for asthma, one refugee was re forced to return time and time again to the emergency department for acute asthma attacks. Instead of treating high blood pressure, we're trying to treat heart attacks. Between 35 and 45% of refugee claimants um, denied health care at crucial moments later become Canadians, now burdened with the fallout of an untreated or poorly treated medical condition they suffered while unable to access basic medical services. Further, many pregnant women denied prenatal care give birth to children who are Canadian citizens. And ultimately, I believe that disenfranchising refugees translating into, uh, translates into harming future generations of Canadians. We must not forget that Canada is a country built from immigrants and refugees. Our refugees today become our citizens tomorrow. But there is something perhaps more troubling about this view of healthcare, aside from its immediate effects on the individuals. By offering full assistance to disenfranchised Canadian citizens, but little or no care to refugees, the federal government is silently supporting a Canadian versus non-Canadian dichotomy. Rather than promoting humanitarianism and social justice, Actions such as these reinforce the belief that a life is only worth saving if it's that of a citizen. Our policies today become our values tomorrow. Somehow this is not the country nor the medical system I dreamed of working within. I plead you to think beyond this budget, this election, and this generation, and think of what kind of country we want Canada to become. As future physicians, we beg you for a different future. Thank you. This country seeking refuge. I was a child. From a child's perspective, this country was vast, full of possibilities. At the time, I more or less understood why I had to flee my country of origin, but I did not understand my mom's desperation. Before, before this turns into a soft story, I want to bring to your attention a point of view that is often ignored. As adults, we are often concerned on our daily tasks and seldom do we stop, step back, and breathe. Our world moves fast. As adults, we have the pressure of the world on our backs. Children, on the other hand, have it easy, or so it seems. When I look back to those days of uncertainty, watching my mom fall into depression, I decided to become her pillar. 
her burdens became mine. Many don't think about it, but mental health can be affected when the sense of displacement, uncertainty, and desperation settle in your everyday thoughts. Whether it's a refugee parent or child, caving under stress is easy. I won't talk about the numbers, I'm sure the point has been made. I will voice the concern, however, of refugee children and youth who are too busy assuming a burden that is not theirs to carry. Refugee health care cuts affect children and youth. Waiting for refugee hearing can take from one, if you're lucky, to up to three years. Not having basic health care covering coverage during that period is inhumane. <laughs> Families that are displaced do not choose to get sick. Children do not choose to get sick. They instead become strong and hide their feelings for fear that families will crumble. I came here as a child refugee. Canada protected me. Canada protected my mother and treated her depression. Luxury? Today it seems like so. As part of the interim federal health program, Coverage of psychotherapy for survivors of torture has been eliminated. Traumatized refugees are currently without support as they get back on their feet. Because Canada protected me, I can, I can brag of good mental and physical health. I have learned five languages, I go to university, and I aspire to join the workforce within a few years. I feel like I'm contributing to this community, and I'll continue to do so. Refugees are not a burden. Refugees are people who need to be protected as they get back on their feet. Like me, child and youth refugees have the potential to become polyglots, lawyers, doctors, but only if we at least provide them with the basic care they need. Thank you. Hello, check one, two. Quick sound check. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Thank you all for coming out today. This is an important cause. Um, we are the definite. I go by the name Shaka Zoo. This is the lovely Mrs. David. Hi. And we got Ro on the acoustics. Now, this cause is uh, it's important to me, too, because I was a, uh, a refugee. Um, came to this country, finally became a citizen, and now my mom's undergoing dialysis because her kidneys are at 6%. And if she was not able to have this uh, free health care, uh, probably four years ago, she would probably not be here with us. So for me, I take this dear to my heart, and I appreciate y'all coming on and supporting this. Yeah! Okay. So here. I know you're standing there. It's time to get get down. Uh, come on, clap. Come on, clap. Come on, clap. Come on. People keep on searching for it. They search high and low and far. Talk to them. How are we gonna ever find it if we don't know who we are? From the mountains to the valleys, through the cosmos and the stars. Yeah. We go this way, we go that way, but we don't know who we are. Keep moving, y'all. Around, around we go. 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 